Hello Bulldogs, uh, thank you for watching this video since I'm not in class today. Um, first I wanted to talk to you about the project I'm going to assign today that will be in Google Classroom. Um, this will be our first physics project um, where you're actually going to build something. Uh, I've made up my own word, physics project, put those two words together, a project. This is project one. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to build a straight up launcher. Um, you're going to shoot something into the air. You can choose what you want to shoot, uh, marble, tennis ball, flip a coin, um, bowling ball, probably not a bowling ball, um, something a little safer. Um, then you're going to shoot it into the air. It doesn't have to go too high. At least it goes at least over your height. Um, it doesn't have to stay in the air long, that long. Um, and what I, the whole point of this is for you to get outside, for you to use your hands, for you to use a little bit of creativity and build something, okay? General information is you're gonna build this device um, that will shoot something fairly straight up, as straight up as you possibly can. It won't be perfect, it won't hit the exact same spot probably, but pretty close to straight up, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're going to make a video of this launch. Um, and what you need to record is it um, being launched and time exact, have a timer where you can see exactly when that object that you are shooting into the air um, leaves the device, okay? And then you have to show it where it comes back to that same point, where it lands, probably pretty close to that, okay? Um, you don't have to get the whole thing into the air, you don't have to get the whole trajectory, but you wanna get um, taking off and landing with how much time in between those two um, activities, okay? Here's the specifics. First thing is be safe. Um, when you're constructing it, when you're shooting it, we don't want any, anyone to get hurt. We don't want any eyes poked out, we don't want any lungs punctured. Um, definitely don't shoot, launch, yourself or anyone else into the air, brothers or sisters or grandparents. Uh, we want to be safe. We don't want to injure anyone. Um, so please, please be as safe as you possibly can. Um, materials you can use will be, um, you can go to Lowe's, you can use materials in your garage, um, make sure you get permission first. Um, but if you use all recycled materials, you can get extra credit. Okay. Um, Make sure you get approval from me. Put it in the comments on this assignment, um, and uh, just so I know what kind of method you're going to use. All right. Rule is no chemical reaction, so you can't blow anything up, you can't um, burn anything, can't shoot anything with any kind of chemical reaction. Okay, it must be a mechanical device, rubber band, spring, um, teeter totter, jumping on it, a weight. Okay, to shoot it in there, you can definitely use those things. All right. Um, and then when you're making the video, like I said, you want it to um, show the launch and the exact point when it gets released and where it comes back to that same height, okay? Um, now, lots of ways you can make this video. Phone, um, the least you can do is use your video recorder on your Chromebook. Um, if you have a cell phone, start the timer, hit record on the Chromebook after it's set up where you can see the timer and the device, um, uh, launch the, so the timer will be going, launch the device and you'll catch it coming back. And as long as you have that timer in the, in the video shot, the whole time you'll be able to get the time of the, um, the, the going up and coming down. Okay. Um, There are some apps. Um, there's one Ms. Atkins found, Video Stopwatch. Um, but it's it's really up to you how you want to make this video, okay? Make sure you're safe, like I said, wear head protection, um, include any protocols. If you need goggles, please please wear them. Alrighty? So that's the project. If you have any questions, let me know. It's being Google Classroom um, assigned to you by today, okay, along with this PowerPoint. Next, I just wanted to talk about the quiz that we're going to have on Friday. 
Okay, just go over a little bit of a review um, since I'm not in class today. Uh, like I said, you'll be you'll be a Friday. Your quiz will be Friday. Um, I won't have office hours today, but I will have off Wednesday, uh, October 14th. But I will have office hours Thursday afternoon um, and Friday. Uh, it won't it'll be due midnight on Friday night. Um, We'll have class. You can ask questions in class that day. We'll maybe do a little bit more review. We'll also start our our um, unit on acceleration, which goes along with the project that I just assigned. Um, eventually, we'll be able to figure out uh, the exact height, initial velocity um, of that object just from knowing the time. It's pretty amazing when we learn some of that math. Okay, so a little bit of review. Let's things that are going to be on this. Okay, make sure you know the difference between scalars and vectors. Um, scalars are, of course, are um, just a number, a magnitude, okay, um, with a, with a unit, of course, with a unit, and vector is the same thing, magnitude, right, uh, unit, but you also have to have direction, okay, just a little bit of review here. There are, go back and read through, through CK12, um, section 2.1 to get some more review of scalars and vectors. Next is distance. Make sure you know what distance is. And when we say distance, um, we usually abbreviate it with just lowercase d. Um, and the equation for distance, of course, is, um, I mean, the the uh, definition of dis distance is that total path that's traveled, right? Total path that's traveled. So no matter if you take turns, you stop, um, turn around, it's that total path traveled, all right? That's what distance is, D. And, and it is a scalar. Displacement, on the other hand, similar to distance, but is a vector form, is that change in position. Okay, so I'll, we usually abbreviate it. Uh, this I, I use the D with the arrow through it, meaning it's that vector, right? Um, <clears throat> and so it's <clears throat> this change in position. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another symbol we use this for change in position is change delta triangle symbol x so change in position and the way we find this if you recall um, delta x is equal to which are all equal to each other the final position minus that initial position initial, initial position say that 10 times fast um, and so it's a straight line as the crow flow flies change of position even if you travel all over the place where do you start where did you end? Subtract the difference between them. Always begin with the final. Okay, displacement. Next, we got into some speed and velocity stuff. Um, speed usually abbreviated with a S. Velocity usually abbreviated with that lowercase v, lowercase s as well. Um, and of course, the equation is distance divided by time for speed, your speed limit. Um, and velocity would be Displacement divided by time. Can I show that difference, that change in position over time. Um, differences being this being velocity is a vector, speed is a scalar. So of course, anytime you have this, um, you can have you should have a direction. Remember, sine can mean direction, as I'll see here in a second. Um, the next thing we got into. We started looking at average speed. Okay, a different equation for average speed. Oops, average speed. Sometimes abbreviated S with a line over it. Okay. Now just remember the equation for this. A little bit different. Very similar, but very different. Is this is the total distance divided by the total time. And so if you're if you're given some variables of um, you know, your first speed um, or your first distance or your first time, 
right? Um, usually not all three, usually just two. Or, and you're given the second distance, um, the second time. You cannot just get these both, go both of these speeds and add them together and divide by, divide by two, right? You have to get that total distance, add them together, total time, add those together, divide to get the average speed. Get, you get a little different answer when you do it that way. Ready? Um, I'll to make, start making an equation sheet, sheet soon. So I just want to point out, um, there is a review in Google Classroom. I'd like you to try those problems. Um, come with questions on Friday's class. Um, this is on this is on that that review. I just want to review this. Um, you have some lines here. This is a position in meters versus time graph. Okay. So if we look at this, what I really want to look at right now is let's say we wanted to find what does this mean? This part of the line here. Okay. If you notice from the from this pink side to this pink side, um, this pink dot to this pink dot. Um, this line looks like it's going down. So what does that mean? What's actually happening in this point here? Of course, this horizontal means is that it's come to a stop. Here we have a sloped line, right? And so if we think about this, what does this mean? Um, how could we how could we find out what the what this part of the line means? Okay. Um, so when you think about this, if we have position, right? Position, which is changing over this from 4.5 seconds to 6 seconds. Right? That position is changing. Okay, It's going down on the graph. Not necessarily down in it's actually motion, but down on the graph. Okay, So if you can see this, this means that's changing position. Okay, and So we can think about this. Right on this graph we have, if we want to know what this means, it's the slope. This would be the, the rise right, divided by the run. Okay, um, Or the rise would be your change in position, and the run would be your change in time. Okay, And of course, we were just talking about in the review, that would be velocity. So we can actually calculate the velocity. So if I want to do this here, our, our, our final position okay, is, is 20 meters. So remember, delta x, one, how to figure this out, is your final position minus initial position. Okay, um, put this equation down here, um, and so we can, we can plug these numbers in. And so we have the final position would be uh, 20 meters, right? Minus our initial position was 60 meters, okay? And so of course we do that math, 20 minus 60 is negative 40 meters, okay? And then of course we want to take that and divide that by the change in time, and so our time change would be Tf minus Ti, which would give us six seconds, six point six seconds minus four point five, where we started here, seconds. That would give us a one point five second time difference. Okay. So if we plug that in, our rise over our run, our rise is negative forty meters. And our run is 1.5 seconds. We can open up handy dandy calculator. I guess I should say that. Do need a calculator for this quiz. Um, and we take a negative 40, 40, oops, 40 negative divided by 1.5 is a negative. 26.7 negative meters per second. So I just wanted to point this out. Negative 26, right? That's why that line is going down. It's a negative. What does negative velocity mean? You can see it here on the graph. It means we are getting closer to zero. We are moving in a backwards direction. We're moving backwards. This way would be a positive direction. This way would be a negative direction. Okay? And you can think about, recall, negative position, right, if we think about this as a number line, positive down here on the bottom would be, we have a negative position of negative 20 down here, negative 40, and so that just means you're on the other side of zero. Negative position, negative x means 
uh, opposite side. 